yo 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 what's going on everybody welcome to and welcome back to another video in today's video we're going to be getting into a retouching tutorial but we're going to be doing something a little bit different as well i'm super excited about to be coming on live and retouching with one of my favorite photographers as well also we're streaming live on youtube as well so i'm going to bring him up right now let's see tavian where are you go ahead and try to join What's up, everybody who's tapping in? Tell a friend to tell a friend. We are getting into a retouching tutorial. Let's see. Taven, are you in here? And we are back it on out. Try to uh, ask to join the live. What's up, Aaron? What's up, everybody who's joining? Let's see. Can I invite? There we go. I just invited you. All right, we're here. What's up, everybody? I hope you guys are having an absolutely amazing day. Listen, it's two phenomenal photographers coming on here. Actually, let me turn my camera around real quick. It's two amazing photographers coming on here right now, and we're going to be getting into a retouching tutorial that I'm super excited about. If you have any questions while we are in here and we're retouching, you're more than welcome to ask. No question is too big. No question is too small so definitely feel free but before we get into this as well i'm going to ask you to do one thing for me and that's head below and give tavian a follow and then also within this as well head to the link in the bio and get that uh go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel to become a part of my photo family so right now tavian you're more than welcome to introduce yourself to the people well quick introduction i'm tavian beyonce um i do beauty fashion photography editorial and products so let's get into it chris heck yeah so i guess i mean we're honestly just going to be having a r random photography questions uh type you know just vibe out session of you know just cleaning up content if you guys are in the comments and you want to actually ask well actually come on and ask some uh questions you're more than welcome to but yeah, T T so Tavian, let the people know where you're from. Uh, so I'm originally from Mississippi, but now I reside in Austin, Texas. I've been here f for about five years now. Okay. Um, it, yep, pretty cool. And that's what's up. And how long have you been uh, into photography? I've been into photography since high school. Oh my but God. But it hadn't all something that I've been proud of. <laughs> no, I definitely feel it, man. Um, I'm like, it's nice when you can. And actually, I'm going to. I we I was debating on this image, you guys. Uh, this is music art music artist Mario. Uh, I photographed him uh, back in about 2019 on a independent product, independent project. We got together and we were just uh, shooting and creating some content. So I'll be retouching this. If you have any questions about how I'm retouching, you're more than welcome to ask. If you have anything with Tavian and you want to ask, you're more than welcome to as well. Um, but Chris, what? Something funny just happened. What happened? Um, when you were <laughs> when you were explaining what and who you were about to retouch, Siri picked it up and she started playing it on my laptop. <laughs> Oh Lord! <laughs> he started playing Mario Breakup. No, not Mario Breakup. Period. No, that's what's up though. Um, one of my favorite portions of well, let me let me tell you my method of retouching right now. So when it comes to retouching for me as a creator and as a photographer, one of my things I like to do is number one, analyze an image. I like to come onto an image and analyze what needs to be done. And then I also go down to a workflow process of how I want to carry, uh, you know, the retouch out. So me personally, I like to start from the top of the head, work my way down to the eyes, the nose, the lips and on down. That way it allows me as a creator to number one, tap in and, you know, just uh, keep a flow, a steady flow of what I'm doing. So when it comes to the frequency separation and when it comes to the spot healing and all of these different methods, uh, dodge and burn and so on and so forth, I can keep con I can keep uh, track with what I'm doing based off the flow that I'm going in. So Tavian, what is one of your methods of actually retouching? So <clears throat> I pretty much use the same method. Um, whether I'm doing a beauty image like uh, the one pictured or a fashion um, editorial image, mm -hmm. which is basically just um, bring it, 
bringing it into some type of raw processing uh, software, whether it be Capture One Pro or uh, Camera Raw and Photoshop. And, you know, just mess around with the colors and the white balance, you know, to make sure that um, you start with a good foundation. And then right. um, one I had to bring in a Photoshop and I immediately start cleaning up the skin in a very minimal way um, so that anything that um, I'm doing afterwards is pretty much just dodge and burning for 80% of the image and, you know, last minute color corrections. I like that. Yep. But uh, the model that I'll be retouching today is um, this gorgeous Moroccan um mixed model her name is Najet and uh, she's one of my favorite models to work with um, she is super talented um, amazingly stunning and she just really knows how to captivate the camera um, it takes that. direction extremely well yeah so um, I've um, with this image I've basically like done a bit of skin cleanup um, there's some blemishes that I need to take care of still but overall um I'm in a good spot with this, you know, making sure that the lighting is um, really nice. There's not like a crazy hot spot on her forehead. Um, you know, overexposed is not an issue. One thing that I see with this image is that um, her hand is a bit lighter than the rest of her face and her neck. So I'll have to color correct her hand um, and, you know, make it match this. But one thing that I have done that I will show you guys um, are the nails. So her nails are originally white, but I was like, you know, oh, wow. feeling super creative. I was feeling super creative and I was like, let me, you know, uh, pump this up a bit and match, you know, the nail color to her lipstick. So that, what you're seeing is after, and that's the before. Wow. So, yeah. Um, How would you achieve a result like that within Photoshop? So, honestly, there is, I feel like, multiple, you know, ways to go about it, some easier than others, but I essentially just, you know, um, used a masking method of coloring um, the nails, sampling the lipstick color, and then um, playing around with the highlights and the shadows to make it look more realistic since I, I went from a very bright hue to a darker one mm -hmm. basically a non-hue because white is really not a hue so because i had to go from white to you know this orangey red color it was a bit more difficult to try to get it there versus just changing the color like from blue to red or something you know what i'm saying right that's what's up i like that and i'm i think that uh definitely you know allowed the image to be more cohesive with you changing it in you know that that way also, you guys, what I'm doing right now is simply doing a uh, skin retouch when it comes to the Spot Heal to uh, tool. What the Spot Heal tool allows me to do as a photographer, you can find the Spot Heal tool over here in the uh, tool panel, is go around and start selecting different imperfections on the skin, whether it's discoloration, whether it's stray hairs that I want to remove, whether it's uh, pimples, or just anything like that. It allows me to go in and start cleaning up the skin in that particular way. Also, what I will say as well, when it comes to uh, the creation, what well, the creativity and kind of like my workflow of retouching, one thing I like to do, especially when it comes to male skin, is diminish but never remove. I think when it comes to my workflow and my style of that, I like to have a polished result, but at the same time not changing it unless it is something in the creative direction that simply calls for fully removing certain characteristics. So with Mario, he has this little, uh, whether it's a mole or it's just, you know, a, a skin mark right here. That is something that's on his face that can't be removed with, you know, uh, you know, regular treatments that you would go through the process of like a blemish or something like that. So with that, being that that's a characteristic of his face, I'm going to leave that. But when it comes to other things, then I will go to, uh, you know, using steps in the frequency separation and Gaussian blur and dodge and burn technique. Now, what I'm about to tap into right now, being that we've already gone over the spot heels we've cleaned up, is I'm going to simply go into the dodge and burn aspect. 
Now with me, what I like to do when I go into the dodge and burn aspect, especially on color images, I like to change the image black and white to be able to see variations of texture that I don't like, also tonality that I don't like. So what I will do is go over here to the tools panel, sorry, the adjustments panel, and click on the black and whites and it will render in Photoshop. Now I will also go over here and bring my reds down. What the reds will do is bring all the red pigment in the skin down. And as I start to bring that pigment down, you will start to see the imperfections or discoloration, you know, show a little bit more. Now I will say, okay, when I was photographing this, I accidentally switched my Nikon from 36 megapixels to nine megapixels. So it might break apart if I start to go a little bit further down, but you can kind of see the general just of what I'm doing. So I'm going to go in with the dodge tool and just clean up this little dark area right here. I'm going to just clean up things like that. Now I would use the burn tool if I had areas that were a little more uh, too bright where the highlights pop, but we don't have this. It's a really good exposed image. So I'm gonna go over here to the tools panel, to the dodge tool, and simply click that. I'm going to bring my brush stroke down. And also within doing this, I am going to bring my opacity, sorry, my exposure down to start going and cleaning up this. And I'm just gonna start brushing the tool and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit as well to change perspective and kind of see a general uh, surface area that I would like to attack. And I'm gonna start using the pen to start cleaning this up. Let me go back to the background layer. So Tavian, what is one of your favorite things when it comes to shooting beauty that you like? Or what, what bit of advice that you would give to another photographer that's looking get into getting into beauty that you would uh, tell them about? I would say um, for anybody who's really trying to get into it, to start with one light and master how to shoot um, and execute beautiful images with one light. Yes. And once you do that, you add another and you add another. You can add, you know, I know some photographers who add up to like five or six lights, you know, by the by the end of the day, you know, so it gets something more creative. But, mm -hmm. you know, to get something super nice and polished, all you really need is one light. I like that. I, I think that's, uh, you know, something when it comes to lighting also speaking of lighting if you're looking at this if you don't know i have a photography lighting diagram booklet that teaches photographers it's a booklet and ebook that teaches photographers how to get better results within their studio and on location lighting you can click this little uh icon right here under the video like play 2.0 and that's the digital copy that you can uh sorry the physical copy that you can purchase for 65 dollars or if you click that link in my bio you can check out the digital copy that you can download right now while we're on this live download it put it in your kindle devices your iphones your androids your ipads and get to shoot and so what are you waiting for go ahead click that link in the bio and check it out it's going for 29.99 also stay tuned because I have another book that's coming out called The Light Bible. It will be coming out next month showing you how I shoot my everyday clients with one light setups, with two light setups, three light setups. So no further ado, head back over and I'm going to get back into the retouch. So right now what I'm doing is simply just going around and cleaning up these uh, areas that are out of kind of, well, this what I'm going I'm doing right now is simply going in and cleaning up the texture and also the dark spots along his skin. And one thing that I would suggest as well when it comes to retouching is making sure you get a great foundation to the image. Retouching is simply like building a house. You know, a lot of the times when you go into building a house, you have to simply go and uproot trees. I would compare that to imperfections within the skin. Then you go over that and you start dodging, burning, and all of that, that's leveling the skin out for the next portion of retouching, which is frequency separation, dodge and burn, uh, Gaussian blur. So you make sure that you get a great surface area to the skin so when you go through all these other processes of retouching, it's a bit easier and the final result looks better. So I'm gonna deselect this real quick just to show you what I did within this part so far of just using the dodge and burn tool. All right, so here's a quick before. 
and here's a quick after see that and what I love about dodge and burn is it allows you to actually go in and not damage the skin through heavy methods uh, of retouching you still get to keep your skin uh, consistency and texture and tonality in certain areas yeah. but it's not overdone yeah, absolutely absolutely I honestly feel like um, messing with the texture you know should be always be um, at a minimal amount you know in the beginning of the uh, the retouching process but everything else you know is pretty much dodge and burn and I'm actually um, trying something new now because I usually uh, use um, either the patch tool or the spot healing tool, mm -hmm. you know, which like those those tools are pretty much um, self-explanatory as far as like editing a photo. But I'm trying um, a clone stamp approach. Um, and the one thing that I find is that you have to be really meticulous about, you mm -hmm. know, what where you're sampling from because of the luminosity changes in the skin naturally right. or, you know just the different the different way the light hits and all that but overall I'm, I'm really liking it and um i'm in the process of like learning something else as well mm -hmm. so uh yeah it's, it's pretty dope i love that i'm like that's what it's all about especially when it comes to uh retouching I think what's cool is that throughout the process of your creativity and your creative expression, you learn things even throughout the process at this this stage in, you know, our careers and things like that. Just throughout the process, you learn different alternatives or different methods when it comes to fixing a problem, you know, and then you have a, another solution that you can always add to your Rolodex. Mm hmm Yep. Let me see. What would you... What would you say you um when you first started retouching Chris what uh what what tool did you did you think was correct to use or like what approach did you think was correct at at, at the beginning or did you just go in and knowledgeable already Oh heck no I nobody did. goes in knowledgeable <laughs> Listen go back to my past work Woo. uh can we say texture and choppy but you know one thing that I would say is Honestly, th what I just explained, um, and also if you guys want to leave some questions down here in the comment section, you're more than welcome to as well. One thing that I would say was a bit like crazy to me when I first got into retouching is not mm -hmm. recognizing how important building a foundation is. You know, actually going right. in and, and removing, you know, those imperfections, going in and removing blemishes and discoloration and all of that. You know, when it comes to retouching, it, it it's things have to be on a good surface in order for the like the process to come out great at the end of the day. So, um, you know, just make sure you take your time when it comes to retouching. Do do the work, put in the work, you know, think about the details. I think a lot of the times we get away from the details and then when it comes to a more trained eye uh, of something that is industry standard or above that, then you see things that are sticking out in your final result that you may think or nobody's going to notice, but somebody with a more trained eye does. So go in, take your time. Right. You know, it may take a little bit more time than, you know, the usual, but, you know, it's a part of the process of retouching, you know? absolutely how about you so when i first when i first started i basically just used the hell out of the um the spot healing brush right um and you know i didn't know any of those super duper um important details like how um even when you're using that tool you're supposed to zoom in and out and you know do micro changes because mm -hmm. it changes the texture of the skin it messes it up you you end up smoothing stuff out and i tell people all the time like smoothing airbrushing um those are like two terms that i removed from my vocabulary when it comes to to retouching because it's just not it i love skin texture i'm a skin texture junkie right I love that about your work, too, that you can, uh, you know, see those characteristics, you know, throughout the, the texture and tonality. And I think it gives a very, like, real result to the image as well. Right 
right now, I um, I had to go off camera for a bit because I need to um, um, plug in my external hard drive since I'm running out of space. And, you know, I get that, that infamous scratch disk error. Oh, God. Then you have to go and delete the caches and all of those things. Right, yeah. I had to do that a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's pretty annoying. I hadn't had to do it in a while, but now I'm like, yeah. Ooh, I messed that up, actually. Let me go back. I'm sitting here thinking that I'm using the right tool. I'm using the whole. <laughs> I'm using dodge and burn and not the mix brush tool. <laughs> No, you know. <laughs> I'm like, what it's, is it's going on? Oh. I'm like, I'm I'm supposed to be dodging an area, and I end up burning it because I didn't change the <laughs> the brush. Listen, I think I kind of like doing this. I I would love to have you know other photographers and creators on as well, and like you can simply just have multiple cameras, everybody's retouching and just talking. I think the biggest part of it is just the knowledge that comes behind, you know. Uh, just simple conversation with different creators and you can kind of see different creators uh, ways of actually stylizing and you know curating a, a photo oh yeah for sure I think um, I think that this would be a great thing especially because you know with all of the um, the different technologies that are in the world now you know this is the next best thing to doing like um an in-person retouching uh, session, you know, with your friend or, you know, just those things that we grew up doing, you know, when we found out somebody else was into the same thing that we did. Completely. Uh, or, you know, like like being in school or college and doing the same um, design, I mean, doing the same assignment together. Mm -hmm. Right, let me go back to this. Also, once again, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in with us while we're going over this retouching tutorial. Man, if you got any questions, definitely don't hesitate to reach out or ask them. Also, if you're looking at this right now and you have a second device on you, go ahead and click that link in my bio and check it out. Don't meet me there, beat me there on to my YouTube channel. Listen, we're about 800 and 23 subscribers and we're on the way to reaching 1,000 subscribers to be able to monetize on YouTube so if you want to become a part of my family which is the photo family head over you can check a lot of retouching tutorials out behind the scenes content where I break down how I get the results I get in my studio and also location lighting also within that we have retouching techniques in full in-depth tutorials and also if you want to be of support to me and what I do you can check out the bio and look at my photography lighting diagram booklet and ebook. So, with that being said, let's get back into it. Alrighty. Boom. So, what we're going to do is I'm trying to remove a vulgar comment right now. There we go, they go, boom. All right, so what we're doing right now is I'm going to go in and start going back to the frequency separation uh, tool along some of the skin. And then after that, I am going to get back into the color grading as well. Cause I want to, you know, play around with the tones within the skin as well. Chris, you, uh, you also have, um, some, um, some, um, actions, um, too, right? For like uh, color and toning and everything. For oh, photos. oh, absolutely. You know, I was going to get into that. Absolutely. So here, let me go into going on my website real quick veer with us stay with us we're here if you have any questions definitely don't hesitate to leave them down in the comment section and we will get with you but also if you're looking to take your whole photography workflow to a whole new level when it comes to you know the portions of color grading and tonality and 
actually cleaning up an image and making it presentable, making it more vibrant, making it look different from your from your other counterparts. One thing that I would suggest is heading back to that link in my bio once again and checking out my photography presets. It's packs of 15, it's packs of four, and they're going for $40 for a pack of 15 actions. A pack of 15 actions for $40. And then also you can get them individual. I have some great things for black and white presets as well. And I'm beyond excited because I just released another preset that is called Icons Only. That is the quintessential action that you need for your black and whites. So head on over to chrisphotostudios.com. Check out the link in the bio where you can find many of my things that I create for photographers and creators alike. And yeah, I'm excited about it. Thank you so much for your continued support. And we are about to get right back into the video. Okay, so as you can see, I'm gonna show you a quick before and after of where we are so far. We started here and now we are here. We use methods like frequency separation, dodge and burn, uh, spot heal tool, the clone stamp tool. We used uh, different variations of adjustments to be able to see black and whites and be able to control, uh, you know, tonality to see imperfections within the skin. And what that allowed us to do is get a better workflow. So right now I'm in my photography store, by the way. This is my photography store and everything that I spoke of in this video, the photography lighting diagram booklets going for $15.99, $29.99, $60. And then also my photography Photoshop presets that allow you to take your work to a whole new level when it comes to color grading are here as well for $40 and $19.99. So if I said, like I said, if you wanna be a, a uh, support to the company, support to what I'm doing, make sure you head over to the link in the bio and check it out today. So let's get back into the video. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do when it comes to this retouching process is start using clone stamp tool. And there's just this little spot that's in the beard right here that I want to kind of fill in. So I'm just gonna go in with the clone stamp tool and start building up that area with texture. And we're a little low down here with the, there we go. We can start just simply going in and cleaning that up. And try to sample as much as possible in this area just to build it up. And then as we do that, we can just keep raising the opacity. and see how that whole spot is being filled in. So Taven, what are you doing right now in your retouching uh, process? Where are you at now? So, um, <clears throat> The thing is, when you're retouching a beauty image, you're dealing with skin, like, you know, for the majority of the image. Um, unless it's like a beauty retouch that's focused on the hair. But mm -hmm. because of that, like, I like to uh, drift my focus a bit from the skin just so I can have fresh eyes on it and I'm not doing too much. It's just a, a visual um, solution for getting fatigued and right. still being able to retouch the image, you know, in a good way. So I'm going to use this time to tackle this area where these crosshairs are not giving what they're supposed to give. <laughs> and how do you attack <laughs> that method? What's your method of doing that? So um, there's two that I use depending on the difficulty. Um, I'm either grafting hair from one place to the other mm -hmm. um, or I'm simply using the clone stamp and using a really steady hand to follow the direction of the hair so that you'll basically, you know, have um, a seamless um, effect once it's done. Absolutely. Um, and then one important thing is that every everything that I do and every adjustment I make is on um, another 
layer, a clean layer, mm -hmm. so that it's super non-destructive. I like that. So if I if I mess up, it's totally fine because I can just delete the layer and start over again, or you know just erase some things, making certain adjustments. You know how it is, Chris. Heck yeah. Well, at the end of the day, I'm gonna tell you like this. I've always been a person that my methods are kind of um, so different from the norm because sometimes I'll use a layer and guess what sometimes I don't like right now I've literally just been using different layers and then I will simply uh, merge them together and continue <laughs> because right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like yeah, Woo. No, after, when you know when you know that you're done you know with a, with a, a, a certain thing it's definitely a good idea to minimize the the size of the Photoshop file to go ahead and merge some layers and maybe, you know, if you need to go back to doing something on the skin, just start a new um, layer for skin cleanup and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Now, with this this area of hair right here, um, there's like luminosity changes. There is like dark right here and then light here because I wasn't really lined up when I started cloning. So now it looks weird. Mm -hmm. So I'm going go back and then zoom in some more so that I can get really really close and then when I sample this area I'm going to make sure that I match And then changing the size of the brush also helps. Like I changed the size of my brush a million times, like a million times during the retouching uh, session. Man, listen, I feel that. All right, guys. So what I'm about to do right now is go into the portion of actually working and cleaning up some. Uh, sorry. What I'm about to do now is go into the portion of uh, color grading. So I'm kind of finishing up with you know the dodge. Uh, sorry, the frequency separation and all of those alternative methods and then I'm going to go into color grading and then get back into methods like frequency sep fr frequency separation dodge and burn so what I'm about to do is go over here and as I said again I have a Photoshop LUTs that's called luxury sand this can be purchased on to my photography store I'm going to simply let this render boom is going to bring warmth within the image. It's going to uh, go after those color tones and tonalities within his skin and just add a little bit more vibrancy, you know, within the actual particulars. And also what I want to do as well, even with this image, is just bring out certain colors. You can go back into the adjustments and push colors a little bit more than uh, what you've done before. You can add a little bit more contrast. Chris, is there ever a moment where um, you get completely zoned out and you realize that you're making the ugliest face on the earth? <laughs> Listen, I'm sure I can feel it. You can feel it. <laughs> Okay. Listen. Feel like sometimes I've even in, I've ended up like biting my tongue or whatever because I'm like so focused on something. And then you catch yourself making that ugly face, and you're like, "Oh Lord, nobody can't mm -hmm. see me, but I don't want to see me like that either." <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever um, been retouching a photo and then um, technology decided to be an asshole? Oh heck and, yeah! Um, you didn't save properly. Oh heck so yeah! So you had to start over on the on your your bomb um, dodge and burn that you did now because this is one of the times where Photoshop didn't recover automatically. Mm -hmm. You just forced to start over from scratch. Yep, completely. L listen, I had that happen literally yesterday with the client image, and I was so pissed. But I was like, you know what? Let's just take what we learned and apply to the next step you know right because we got to do it anyway so right exactly you got to go back Literally, and do it you so can, you can you can whine for a second but then you're like all right let me just 
Let me go ahead back. And stop we added a little bit of grain within the image as well. And I think what I'm going to do is go in and play with the selective colorings. And then, you know what? I might just go to a different image and retouch that. Even though we have an hour on here, I don't know how much time we still have left. Yeah, I don't even know how to look at that, Chris. I know. And it, I guess it gives you a... Um, it gives you a little prompt to... It's like, hey, uh, we're coming up on an hour. So you might want to wrap this thing up. You might want to wrap it up. Because <laughs> if you don't wrap it up, we're going to cut you off. Right. All right. What's up, Jen? And the, the fact that it only gives you an hour, that's, that's pretty... That's Completely. Something. It's disrespectful. It is disrespectful. You know what? I'm going to go back into the frequency separation. But man, I hope you guys really took something away from this. And if you have any questions, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to Tavian. Definitely don't hesitate to reach out to me. Also, head over to the link in my bio and check out my YouTube channel where you can find a lot of retouching tutorials like this going on. And if you also want to take your workflow and your lighting to a whole new level, click that link in the bio too, where you can check out a lot of my photography uh, educational content and products to help you and other photographers alike take your workflow to a whole new level. Okay. Chris, do you have a favorite lighting? A what? Do you have a favorite lighting setup? Oh yeah, my favorite lighting setup is literally a, some might call it a slight clamshell lighting. Um, but I like to have a light up here, 45 down, a light right here, straight on or tilted up. It's not particularly a clamshell lighting, but it gives the best lighting. It gives some of the most consistent lighting. Um, and I kind of call it like a fake clamshell, but it, it's kind of hard to explain. But if you look at any of my, my work, you would definitely be able to see it within the eyes of the, the subjects. The thing is, it sounds like it still just gives a really, um, it's a consistent really lighting setup for a main light. light. Oh yeah. It's consistent lighting. And that's what I love. All right, guys. So this is one of the images. I mean, this is the image that we started on. This is a quick before of where we started. This is the quick after. This shot was also shot in New York City right on J Street. The J Street Bridge is right in the back as well. You know what? While we're talking about that, I think what I'm going to do is try to bring that out a little bit more. So I'm going to go in here with the Dodge tool actually and just bring a little bit of that detail in the back out of the J Street Bridge. Just a little, let's see what we can do back there. You know, bring different methods. Yeah, hey, no. Listen, thank you guys so much. I'm getting notifications that you're uh, purchasing products and all of those, those good things, adding uh, this book right here to your wish list. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I hope you take something away with it. I know you're going to learn from it. So, that's not even a concern, but I really appreciate the love and support. Keep it up. Keep it up. Thank you. Y'all, for real, no cap. It's a super well executed um, booklet. Man, wait till y'all uh, see the next one. Uh, 
what aspect are you working on right now? Now I'm just going back to the scan and uh, getting rid of the uh, the other blemishes before I start uh, dodging and burning. Mm-hmm. Do you sometimes feel that you are a micro, a micro retoucher? And what do I mean by a micro retoucher? Those folks who zoom in and literally stick in that one spot and they try to get every single imperfection out. Man, I used to do that when I was, you know, when I, when I thought that perfection, you know, was the way to go when mm-hmm. it came to retouching, but now because i've grown as an artist Mm -hmm. and you know into my my personal style i don't i don't go in and do extreme micro um retouching and dodging and burning right i i I love zooming in and out and and giving the overall even skin but still very uh very realistic i don't want it to look too perfect absolutely um you know unless you know matt cosmetics says we want this to look like they were born with no pores that then part. I'll go there but other than that no nah, I, I, I grew out of um, you thinking that um, you know that was the way to go and then overuse of frequency separation that part I honestly I honestly think that um, you you have to train your eye almost like you're you training do. you know your hair to you know wave up or something because you can use frequency separation and not realize that it's softened the hell out of your photo yep and it's methods and to get that back as well other, if you don't yeah. know what'd you say i say it's methods to get some of that you know texture back but at the end of the day if it don't need to be done and you can get away from doing stuff like that you know then it definitely won't be the same that part like i uh I always encourage people to capture all the texture when you're photographing, you know, and and not um, What's up, baby face? try to into it unless it's totally necessary. Oh, listen, I absolutely agree. Couldn't agree more. Make sure if you're looking at this video also, just as a reminder, you head up and go ahead and follow me and Tavian if you enjoyed some of the uh, content and the conversation and the advice that we've been giving make sure you head over and go ahead and click that follow button yo what's up man man the day is going absolutely amazing how are you right now we're simply just uh you know got some photography conversation going on tavian lives in houston i live in charleston south carolina and we're uh simply just having you know some good photography conversation and just giving some advice on how to, you know, take your workflow to a whole new level. What's up, y'all? Thank y'all. This is um, pretty cathartic, Chris. Listen. (laughs) Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, bro. All right, so um, I think I'm, yeah, I'm pretty much done with this area um, as far as uh, cleaning up the texture imperfections go. Mm-hmm. The rest of this can literally be done with um, with dodge and burn. But if you um, if you look at this, the the raised um, blemishes are gone, and obviously there are some luminosity imperfections, you know, all throughout here. But I will not fix those with anything but dodging and burning. Heck yeah. Let's see. We have... I've been shooting for a while now. So I'm so super knowledgeable about your topic. I'll definitely follow you, sir. Listen, I'll follow you right back. Man, thank you. Listen, I would love to have you on as well if you want to come on and we can do uh, a retouching Tuesday or something like that. I think that'll be dope. Like, we start at uh, 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock or something. What What do you think, Tavian? What's a good time for the people that's kind of... You know, good on Cal- East Coast time, West Coast time, Central time. Man, whatever, whatever time they done eating. Listen, so I definitely say nine o'clock is honestly a good time because it's what six in California where everybody's kind of just you know out of work and winding down. Everybody's on the East Coast kind of winding down as well. So I think I'm gonna start this as a a, a 
a I'll, I'll find a name for it I'm like something come uh, come to my head but I would love to bring photographers on it, uh, retouching happy hour listen I'm like I would love to start bringing more photographers on you know to just give some knowledge about retouching or lighting or all of those beautiful things you know Make sure if you guys are looking at this as well. Hey, good morning, good morning. Thank you so much. Listen, comedian. <laughs> um, thank you so much for you guys who are like liking and following. Thank you for joining us on this retouching tutorial. Listen, if you want to be of free support, free, free support to us, make sure you go ahead and you head over to our pages. You send and show some love on some of the images you like you follow you share content also if you want to see more content like this make sure you head over to my youtube channel the youtube is in the link in the bio you can simply go to the bio it's free to subscribe it only takes a little bit of your time and i would greatly appreciate it especially get into this process of being able to monetize on the one and only youtube thank you so much i greatly appreciate the support and if you also want to be of support in a monetary aspect and you also want something that's going to be able to help you take your whole workflow to a whole new level make sure you click that link in the bio you head over to the photography store where i have nothing but educational content for photographers and products for photographers to be able to take their workflow to a whole new level Oh man, you come from Clubhouse too. Listen, we all Clubhouse family up on here. <laughs> I know, right? Yep. Clubhouse is where I met my amazing friends. Right? For left celebrity photographer. Listen. Chris oh, Clubhouse. Kavanaugh. Bro, it seems so crazy that that was what, like three years ago, two years ago? Man, so much time has passed since then, and you it doesn't feel like it at all. At like, all. And that, it's, it's so funny because there really was a like a, a sweet spot grace period of Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that I landed on there when I did. Absolutely. Really Too bad that it changed so much, you know, because you know, money changes everything. Right. It is what it is. Listen. I'm actually working on a... Um, I, I switched over to another image now, Chris. Um, okay. This one, she... Uh, she has no no lip color on, so this was like one of the first looks that we did, and I was the I was the hairstylist for this shoot. Oh, nice! You know, talk about doing what you have to do in order to get what you need to get. Listen, that <laughs> that that particular thing that you just said is what my mom has always gave me uh, ever since the beginning of my career. Use what you have to get to where you want to be. You know. Especially yep. when it came from, uh, you know, starting as a photographer and wanting to have certain cameras, wanting to have this, that, and the other thing. It's like, use the yeah. tools that you have as a creator, as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. as an artist, or whatever you, you have, you know, or whatever you are. Like, use the tools at hand to get yourself out of situations you don't want to be in, to change situations, to further situations and perspectives, you know? Mm hmm and it will literally make a whole difference within your career and everything you do. Yeah, because honestly, you know, having having that flashy um, uh, $5,000 camera will mean nothing if you don't know how to execute well-lit, well-exposed photography. Listen, invest in workshops. Invest in right. uh, mentorships. Invest in shooting yeah. as much as possible. Yeah. Learning from your mistakes. You have to be picky with those too. Oh yeah, I always say Whatever. shoot everything, but not everybody. <laughs> it's kind of right. like a double negative. You got to be picky with the, sh the people you shoot with, the people you learn from. Like all that, I had to learn that because there were so for for a while. I mean, I'm pretty sure there still is, but I'm out of the phase where I'm constantly looking up stuff. But when I was, you know, in that beginning phase of trying to learn, 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 I quickly noticed that there were a lot of different educational materials that got a ton of attention, but they were not um, they were not up to par with what I was looking for, you mm -hmm. know, as far as becoming a better photographer. Because I'm like, let me look at these magazine covers and this retouching and compare it to what this person is trying to teach. Right. Something ain't right. So let me ask you this. So, what stops mm -hmm. you from 
from actually being one of those people who uh, you know create your own tutorials and your own products and things like that I feel like I'm an extreme perfectionist mm -hmm. and uh, I'm also a very dramatic individual so <laughs> if I can <laughs> dramatic <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for instance if i can't do it big i don't want to do it at all listen but do, do you think sometimes that can become a, a hindrance to moving to your next step oh yeah for sure you know with some things like mm -hmm. uh, thankfully i'm not like that with every single thing but uh with the, with the educational aspect of it and, you know and me being um you know an instructor of any sort and all that mm -hmm. i really do from experience I just want to make sure I master it like completely um, to where the information that I'm giving to somebody else is a bad habit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, do you ever feel that though? Like even, I, I love that we're having this conversation right now because I have conversations with a lot of photographers like this through my mentorship programs. And they say a lot of things like, I want to make sure I master, but do we ever really master things in life? Like, I, I feel once you start to master something completely, your uh -huh. growth stops happening, you know? And I think one, th one thing that I, I learned, even through getting into this educational aspect as a photographer and going full force with this, is that even through your experiences, even if it's not at a certain level that you think you know you should be on to actually be able to give somebody something simply that tool that you're mm -hmm. using right now to remove those imperfections are something that somebody does not know you know the whole conversation of what we've been having right now is something that people don't know and they can use your experiences you know your perspective you know your unique experience and perspective to uh be of benefit or help them in a, a particular way sometimes i feel like you just have to use what you have you know, in, in knowledge, you know, at that very moment, you know, and right. then your tribe kind of aligns with, you know, where, where you, where you are right now. I think, um, I, I'm like, I'm not completely, um, opposed, you know, to like doing something like this or, mm -hmm. you know, like doing, you know, doing a live YouTube session and just kind of talking through it, like very casual, um, you know, in that regard, but as far as like creating actual materials, you know, to put out there, um, mm -hmm. it's the, the difficult thing is finding the time to do so because, like, no, I feel between, it between between you know full time graphic design and then um, then photography and and the retouching and you know having to be the creative director and all this other stuff mm -hmm. because you you don't have a team yet. It's like yeah, I'm, this stuff is on a list to do, but I Heck don't yeah. necessarily have everything I need to get to it right now. And of course, you know, then there becomes a thing where I love yes, that I pattern do image. This, I, I don't want to throw it together. So no, I definitely feel it. If what he said, a photographer, as a photographer, there is no such thing as a mastering. You learn until you die. Completely, I feel that. But no, I definitely hear you on that. I'm like, when you have to be everything plus on top of that. Uh, you know, do the things that also pay the bills in a different perspective and way, it could definitely be challenging. So I, I absolutely wholeheartedly, you know, understand and get that. I also feel like everybody has, you know, their timing as well. Oh, know? yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And, you know, that it, patience is a virtue. It truly is. You know, so although there's a ton of things that I would love to be doing right now, mm -hmm. I still have to be patient with being able to execute everything. Completely. Um, always and forever I'm always going to be a, a, a steward I love that so what are you doing right now within this uh, process of your retouching cleaning up um, areas around the nose and here's the before and after oh. now if you if you if you have you know the eye to see the the uh, texture has been if has been fixed, mm -hmm. but the patchiness has not. Right. So that's where dodge and burn comes, in. and um, 
just to give like a bit of context uh let's see let's go for the this what is this the, the spot healing rush because they changed mm-hmm. this stuff over the years okay yeah spot healing right here so i'm gonna spot heal the heck out of this right now actually that doesn't look half bad you know um but let's just say i decided to swipe across and try to fix it all at one time that completely ruined that texture it ruined the texture luminosity everything that's why it's important to do stuff at a small um at a, at a slow pace and also um you know within detail oh I, I, I listen i can't say enough about actually just taking your time to do things like that when it comes to uh you know retouching and getting into the portion of like simply taking your time you know mm-hmm. i'm also thinking about removing this tattoo oh word but I, I don't know like i may i may remove it and i may not i mm-hmm. don't know maybe i'll i'll rem- i'll do a version to where it's removed for my portfolio right um but you know keep it you know for something else no i definitely get it I'm like, it definitely reads two different things. Um, do you, let me see. Do you, um, like, how, I'm like, what, what's your method on, well, no, I'll ask this. Are you going to change the color of the backdrop or are you going to just leave it like, like that color? Or do you color grade gonna, your beauty as well? Uh, yeah. Color grading for beauty, like a um, just a small amount, literally mm-hmm. a small amount. And I mean, I guess for beauty, my color grading tends to go toward more of a so, like if you're able to notice, you know, um, a certain color cast in the shadows, like I'll mm-hmm. correct that and bring that color up or, or minimize it just for the overall look of the photo. But with this one, since it's a very clean photo, mm-hmm. the light background goes super well. I love that. Um, and, you know, it just, it, it also makes it cohesive with the whites of her eyes, mm-hmm. you know, which is actually not pure white, not a gray. So, you know, little details like that make a huge difference um, with the overall look of the photo. And at the end of the day, nobody's truly going to be able to see what you see with your work. That part. So sometimes, like I was, when I was photographing her and I was, you know, um, directing her to use her hands in one of the shots that we got it was i think it was actually um while we were getting this but her hand was elsewhere mm-hmm. i lit told her like she placed her hand and i was like can you just bend the top of your finger your index finger just a bit and then in that moment i noticed who the hell notices stuff like that right and then she laughed at me because because she was like you do I was like, well, I guess that's really what makes an artist an artist. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that, that particular thing wouldn't have bothered anybody, you know, somebody else. And somebody else probably wouldn't have even noticed it. But I literally just go off the cuff and go off my gut with when, like, when I'm shooting. So Completely. if I'm seeing something and it needs to do something else, I'm like, all right, yeah. Can we just do this, please? Listen, I absolutely get it. And one thing I say as well, you know, learn to correct things in in the very moment of of the like photo shoot. I know a lot of the times people go with the perspective of it could be changed in Photoshop, or we can add it, we can you know take it away, da 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 da. Do things right in that very moment. Right. You know, I think that's so important right. when it comes to the retouching process or just the process of creativity. You know, as well, it's like if you see a problem, like go ahead and and actually take the time to you know, correct it. Right. Now, one of my, one of my uh, favorite things slash least favorite things to do is, um, fill in this color, you know, Mm -hmm. where the, where the lipstick now doesn't fall. Right. Um, and you know, it's a, it's a process of using different, um, different methods and, um, And just making it blend overall. No, I definitely get it. Let me 
see. Add it to story. Perfecto. I like looking at other photographers' portions and, uh, you know, takes upon retouching as well. I think it, it's very interesting to see the creativity and the artistry from mm -hmm. another, you know, person's perspective. Yo, what's up, guys? We have All over right. 250 people and counting and fluctuating, 300 going up and down up in here. If you're liking the content that you're hearing, if you're liking what you're seeing, make sure you head up and go ahead and follow me and Tavian in this live right here. Go ahead and smack those love buttons to be able to show support to content. And then also while you're doing that, make sure you head up and comment on some photos. Say some things that you like about it. Leave a nice post. Leave, you know, some inspiration, motivation, you know, things that you might want to work on. If you have any questions as well, you're more than welcome to leave them in the comments section. Uh, ask some things. And we appreciate you for just coming in, tuning in and rocking out with us. I'm like, it's crazy. I feel like we've been on here for more than an hour. Right. So maybe they changed something. But I probably will get that uh thing soon. <laughs> and it's like, hey, listen. <laughs> but no, that's what's up, man. But if you want... Oh, th there it is right there that we have an hour. Yep. So if you want, we can wrap it up and, uh, you know, you can go ahead and give your outro to it and have people, you know, follow you and we'll wrap it up right there. Absolutely, guys. So um, thank you for joining 